are you doing? Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we're, you should have the schedule anyway, and uh, Simon is now going to provide an update to where we are. And uh, yeah, so fire ahead, and if there's anything specific, or just if you can raise a hand, or else I'll just go around the, the uh, virtual room, okay? Thanks a lot. So maybe, uh, Michael Glenn, do you want to kick off? Yeah. Thanks, Peter. Hi, Simon, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, just nice to see you out in the warm weather training camp. What's it like out there? How did the travelling go, and, and how are you settling in? Uh, yes, yeah, we're, we're pretty much at home here. Um, it's rained today and a bit yesterday, so just like to be back in uh, in HBC. Uh, but no, it's excellent. We obviously we're we're very familiar with the surroundings here now, and it, and it makes that um, much easier just to settle in and get um, hit the ground running. So it's been it's been a great couple of days so far. Very good. I'm just looking at some of the pictures there. Um, Ronan Kelleher running around here in Frawley. Uh, I saw a picture of Mac there. How has, that, has everyone trained full or is there limited training for some guys? No, everyone was good today and yeah, we're really pleased. The, um, the medics have done a great job on, on um, you know, in terms of the provincial stuff and, and then the transition into national camp uh, has been really uh, seamless in terms of those players that have come in with a couple of niggles. But um, so far, so good. So hopefully that will continue. We'll, we'll have a full deck to um, to train with tomorrow and uh, leading into next week. Very good. So, like maybe Ronan Kelleher in a position where there's quite a few guys injured on schedule to, to feature. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's doing well. Good. So, have any problem with Mac Hansen? I know he missed out the last couple of rounds. No, again, um, he's progressing really well, um, like like Ronan. Rob Herring and a few others. So yeah, just just I think um, that yeah they're working incredibly hard and, and come into camp in in a good place uh, and um, you know they've continued that progression on. So so far so good. Very good. Just because it's topical, Simon, and you've been in the Ireland setup for so long, um, and you're going to be very busy over the next whatever eight months with Six Nations and the summer tour. But in terms of yourself as a coach. When, when these positions come up, is it something that you consider? Are you happy enough with international rugby, or is it something you have no doubt that you don't want to go back to the club um, when any of these positions come up? Um, what was that regarding? Sorry. Just you know, like you as a coach, I mean, you're obviously very busy for the next eight months. But have you considered a return to club coaching? Is that something that appeals to you at some stage? Uh, yeah, not not in the immediate future, no. Good stuff. Okay, okay. thank you. Thanks. Um, obviously, this section, just to add, is there's a, a live section and then we'll have embargoed for tomorrow's newspapers as well. Just if you could raise your hand, please. Otherwise, I'll just nominate people. Um, Saf, if you can raise your hand if you have any questions, Saf. I'm okay. go, Peter. Yeah, go, go, away. go on, Matt. Hi, Simon. How's it going? It's Matt from BBC. Hey, Matt. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Simon, can you just talk to us about the the, the process of appointing uh, Keelan Doris as captain for the series? Um, I guess, yeah, he's been um, named the Leinster captain uh, and um, he's been in the leadership group for um, for a good while now and progressing uh, in terms of, of that, that role within that group, um, the senior group. So, you know, I... I guess it was an easy transition um, for for Faz to make in terms of um, you know giving him that that position across the autumn series. Um, obviously, Pete's position was was uh, that we we wanted to make sure that he gets uh, game time, and um, you know he'll do that this weekend uh, in the uh, in the Munster jersey, and then uh, he'll hopefully come into camp at some point um, if he gets through the weekend. So yeah, it was it was a. An easy transition, I guess. Uh, Caelan, has, like I said, he's been involved in the senior leadership group for a, for a good while, and, and um, yeah, it was a it was an easy, easy decision for uh, for Andy to make, I'm sure. Yeah, and uh, Caelan's like sort of naturally being talked about now as a, as a candidate for the, the Lions captaincy. Obviously, that's not a decision for you to make, but uh, the qualities that he has and the player that he is and the, the rise that he has. Sort of had in recent years. Can you see him performing in a role like that? 
Obviously, that's, that's wrong. I'm either <laughs> yeah, you might want to ask Faz that. Um, listen, all I can say is what Kalen's um, done here in, in his progression as a, as a player and then as a, as a leader within the group. Uh, you know, I think anyone who gets to work with Kalen realises that he's got uh, a huge amount to offer uh, in, in terms of the way he plays the game. He leads by example, uh, but also he has... Um, you know, he thinks about the game uh, differently. He thinks about the way that the group are, the empathy that he has for the group. And, and um, with that, then that allows him to, to lead in, in different ways. And he's, um, you know, he has a really, you know, he's has a high standing, obviously, within, within Leinster, but also within this group. And, you know, it, it, uh, yeah, I guess the next four weeks are going to be, um, you know, part of his development as a, as a leader and, and, um, you know that will um, that will allow him to to sort of settle into the role, and then who knows after that? But I'm sure Kalen's thinking just about the here and the now and w what we've got to prepare for um, in about um, eight days' time. Could just ask one quick uh, one more on New Zealand. Obviously, it's a, it's a rivalry that's really sort of taken off in the recent years. So, how exciting is it to, to be kicking off this series against the All Blacks again? Yeah, it's brilliant. We get the chance to play uh, against teams um, from the Southern Hemisphere and, and obviously there is that little bit of, of rivalry between ourselves and New Zealand over the last couple of years. Um, you know, they got one over us the last time we met them, obviously, um, in, uh, in Paris. And, you know, I, I think they've had a change in, in the coaching setup. There's a number of individuals that have come into their group uh, that will be different from what we've experienced before. So, yeah, there is a little bit of difference. They've, they've lost a few senior players over that period as well. Um, you know, we're trying to progress and, and keep um, keep evolving as a team as well. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, nice, it's a nice kind of storyline. Um, they, they've come off the back of the Japan game. They've got to play England this weekend. Um, it's our first game uh, for for a good while, so yeah, th there's lots of um, sort of subplots to, to the game, but essentially we're playing against uh, New Zealand uh, in the Viva on a on a Friday night, and uh, we want to make sure we hit the ground running. And um, you know, the history behind that will probably be something that, that you guys will talk about a little bit more. Thanks, Thanks very much, Simon. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Gavin Casey. Hey, Simon. How are you doing? Good, Gavin. Thanks. Just as it pertains to the spring, Simon, when you take over as interim head coach, what is this November about for you? Like, what are you looking to do in order to, to ease that transition, either for the players or equally for yourself? Uh, yeah, I, I guess not a huge amount will change in that in that period. Obviously, we, we lose we lose um, Faz and we lose you know a, a big part of what this team's about. Um, but we're also you know this is. Uh, Andrew Goodman's first time involved fully. He was with us in the in the summer, uh, shadowing Mike Cat. He came on on tour with us with the emerging group, and you know he's added massive value to the group. Um, he has uh, yeah great knowledge, great way about him. You know coaches really positively, and you know I think I think that's a, a real um, addition. And I guess we're trying to figure out what um, what that the dynamics of the coaching group will look like and feel like. Um, when Andy's not here for for next season, but off oh, sorry for the second half of this season, um, and I guess the next few weeks will allow us to do that to to, to figure out what what will be needed. And um, you know, like I say, it's it's it's, it's an exciting time, um, but um, you know, we probably won't make any decisions until the, the latter part of the of the November series. Just on the topic of fresh voices, there was some chat that you got a really inspiring or, or really compelling guest speaker in quite recently to speak to the guys. Can you shed any light on that? Yeah, Nando came in. Um, he was part of the um, the Uruguayan uh, club side that uh, was involved in an accident um, back in the um, 70s. He um, he came and spoke to the group um, when, we were in, when we arrived in camp. Uh, yeah, just just a really inspirational figure in terms of um, what he and his teammates went through. Um, you know, in uh, terrible conditions. Uh, they, you know, he he. I didn't realize that he was obviously one of a member of seventeen uh, players on that flight. But he also had his his mother on the flight, his sister on the flight. He lost them in in the accident. Um, 
and they spent um, you know two and a half months trying to figure out a way of staying alive. Uh, and yeah, it was really inspirational. Um, just just someone that you you could relate to because of his rugby background. Um, you know the the team that he played with. Um, has a shamrock on the, the the jersey that they they uh, they play in, and you know he obviously has a, a massive uh, love and affiliation to to Ireland because of that. He grew up uh, being um, taught by um, by uh, the Christian brothers. Um, so yeah, there's there was a familiarity and, and and similarities to to what he was talking about, yeah, and a real inspiration and interesting to hear from someone that had been through all of that and still had the positivity to. To come out the the other side and and live a very good life. That's amazing. What was the response from the players to uh, stories compelling as that one? Um, a bit of shock, I think. Uh, yeah, I I don't think they could quite believe. I think maybe a lot of people had seen the old film, the Alive film, and then there's another more recent one being being uh, being made. And and I'd say um, until you hear from the people that were actually involved in those experiences, uh, you don't probably fully appreciate what they went through. Uh, and um, you know how much uh, they relied on each other, and, and uh, were were able to to work through some some really uh, tough to, tough um, tough times, uh, and and come out the other side. And, and obviously, they lost a lot of friends and family along the way. Um, but it was yeah a pretty inspiring story. Would, would you just have Nando's surname by any chance for posterity, per, or I can ask Roy or Marquis afterwards? Per, per, Perato, Perato. Nando Parato, yeah. Nando Parato, P A W R A D O. Thanks for being here. Cheers, Simon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, that's that's it for the live. Uh, sorry, Richard McCormick, you've got one question just for the live section, and then we'll go into the yeah. world. Thanks, Peter. Uh, thanks, Simon. And um, just from those players that you travelled to South Africa with, uh, Cormac and Sam in particular, what are you looking to see from them this week, as opposed to what you saw from them on that emerging on the trip? Uh, well, they they were they were both excellent on that trip, uh, and they both travelled with us to South Africa in the summer as well. So they've they've been around the camp for a while. Um, you know, I, I have to say that both Sam and Izzy led particularly well in in Bloemfontein when we were there for the emerging tour. They stepped up. They played a lot of game minutes. Um, Sam in particular started all three games, and he and he led really well as as it is he so. Yeah, I, I think they've they've got to be comfortable in the environment and and feel like they're they're certainly part of this for for a reason that that they're going to get game time and and you know they want to push for selection. So, you know, it's, it's it is about sort of about their development, like it is with with a number of players. But you know, they're in they're in there on the merit um, in, in the squad, and uh, yeah, we we're expecting big things from them in the future and. They they've already turned up here in the right frame of mind and and um, you know kicking on from from the summer and in the the emerging experience. Okay, thanks very much.